inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. And then see if you can match the inhalation with the exhalation. So that if you breathe in for four counts, you're exhaling for four counts. If you're inhaling for five counts, you're exhaling for five counts, and so on. Let's take about three or four more breaths here, just like this. Inhaling and exhaling with equal count. Okay, and then just bring the arms beside your body, beside your torso, and then very slowly, you're gonna inhale, bring the arms up towards the ceiling, the hands towards the ceiling, then over to the floor behind you. And then very slowly, exhale, bring the hands back down beside your waist. So before I was asking you to breathe in with that steady breath, breathe whatever count you're doing. So if you're inhaling for four, inhale the arms over, to the floor behind your head to the count of four or whatever that count is and then exhale slowly bring the hands back down beside you and then just see if you can actually start to slow the breath rate down a little bit And do this about four more times, just very slowly inhaling the arms up. Try to refine the quality of your breath. Try to be a little bit more smooth in your breathing. And then the next time you bring the arms over your head, just want you just to stay there. Just bring the arms over your head and just stay there. And then slide the legs over to the right and keep the left hip on the floor. So don't lift the, the left leg off the floor. You're just gonna slide the legs to the right. And then slide the arms or your upper torso as well to the right. So you can slide the left leg as well. Just don't let the left hip or left leg, you know, come off the floor. That's it. And then the upper torso also comes over to the right. And now just stay there and breathe. Again, the left shoulder stays on the floor. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling deeply. That shoulder is hurting, isn't it? Lift your arms. <laughs> so now we know where one place to start working. <laughs> Inhaling deeply. Push a little bit more through the left heel of your foot. Keep the legs straight. Just push through the left heel. Push through there. There you go. Reach a little bit more with the left hand. Then what I want you to do now is just bring your left hand to the outer left rib cage. And just have the hand just kind of resting there for a moment. And then I want you to breathe into that hand. So really breathe into the side of the body. Inhaling deeply. Okay. 
and exhaling deeply. Really fill that hand with your breath as much as you can. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling deeply. Really fill that hand as much as you can. You almost have this sense that the ribs are moving into that hand. There you go. Just take another breath or two here. And then very slowly bring the legs back to center. Let the hands rest just for a moment. Take a deep breath. Inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. Relax everything. I was kind of talking a little bit earlier about the parasympathetic nervous system that when we're operating more into in the parasympathetic nervous system, we actually start to improve muscle function. It comes out of that place of rest and digest. Remember that stress creates inflammation and inflammation disrupts the communication system between the brain and the rest of the body. So we're looking to decrease inflammation. The way to do that is through deep relaxation. So when you're ready, at your own time, please slowly start to bring the legs over to the left. And then again, bring the arms up and slide the upper torso now to the left as well. And then just pressing a little bit through the left, sorry, through the right heel of the foot. You don't have to keep it engaged like all the time, but just kind of find that sense of lengthening, if you will. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling deeply. Again, deep breaths. Refine the quality of your breath. Make the breath a little bit smoother. And then when you're ready, bring that right hand just to the outside of the ribs, just resting it on the rib cage, but more like on the side ribs, not on top of the ribs, just a little bit on the side body. And then see if you can just really send the breath into that hand. Biomechanically, what I'm asking you to do is actually to activate your diaphragm a little bit more. So to breathe a little bit more diaphragmatically. Inhaling, exhaling. And take about two or three more breaths here. <clears throat> And then very slowly start to come back. And again, just rest for a moment in Shavasana. And 
And again, just take a few deep breaths. One of the luxuries of this week, of our time together, or is that you've created this space in your life, in this moment, to just be with your breath, with your body. Let's take about two more breaths here. Really feel the belly rising away from the spine. As you exhale, the navel starts to move back towards the spine. Okay, we're going to start with our next, or our first really, um, muscle activation, which is really simple. <laughs> but sometimes a little complicated to explain. But you're going to stay on your back, and all you're going to do is to see, you're not going to really move anything. All you're going to do is see if you can pull the right hip up towards the right bottom of the rib cage. It's called a hip hike. You're not going to lift the right leg off the floor, so keep the right leg on the floor, and just slide the leg up or the hip up as high as you can. If you bring your right hand and then relax it, if you can bring your right hand in between your right rib and your right pelvic bone, so right, sort of right there, and then do it again. Bring the right hip up and you'll feel those muscles contracting. It's your quadratus lumborum. So you feel those muscles contracting and then relax it. Try not to lift the hip up. Just keep the hip on the floor, keep the leg on the floor, and then do it again. Yes, right there. And then relax. And then do it again. Pull the hip up. It's like right in there. And then exhale, relax. Do you feel that relaxing now and then engaging? Do it again. Yes. <clears throat> so that's your QL, your quadratus lumborum. Really important muscle that helps to maintain pelvic stability. If your pelvis is unstable, then you have pain in your lower back. And then relax. <clears throat> Do you feel it, Judy? Asandra, sorry. It's sunny. Do you feel it? Okay. And then do it again. Yeah. There you go. Right there. Keep going. Up. And then do it. Uh, relax. And we'll do it one more time. And then do it again. You got it. And then relax. Good. And we'll do the same now on the left side. So you can, if you want to, you don't have to feel it, but sometimes it helps you develop that mind-body connection. So if you want to bring your left hand to the QL, and then again, do the hip hike. Lift the left hip towards the pelvic bone. Yeah, you just really want to isolate, like keep the legs straight. Okay. Now keep the legs straight and just pull it up. There you go. So you're kind of bending the knee to compensate, to try and you know force it. But in doing that, then you start to activate other things or, or move away. So yeah, try to relax. Remember, 10%. <laughs> Less is more. And then relax, everybody. Just kind of shake your hips a little bit. That's always nice to do. And then do it again. Bring the left. You can do shake the whole body. Do it again. Bring the left hip. And then relax. 
Try not to engage your right, uh, your left glute as you're doing that. Lift, bring the hip up. There you go. I can see, I can see some of you um, like crunching your faces up as you're doing this, and then relax. It's possible. And then do it again. Bring the hip up. No, 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 no. Like, there you go. There, you're doing it. It's just a little bit weaker. And then relax. And then do it again. Okay. Two, three, four, five, and six. Good. And then just come back. Beautiful. Okay. So come and roll over to the right, and then I'd like you to come up onto your hands and knees, please, facing the front. Okay. And then just as you're on chakra, this is called chakra vakasana, and you're on all fours, spread the fingers as much as you can. Walk the hands a little bit forward. Sometimes we have the hands a little bit too close. So bring the hands a little bit forward and then tuck your toes and come into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Nice. And just a few times, come to fours, inhale, lift the chest and heart and exhale, come to downward facing dog. Separate your feet just a little bit, just a little. Inhale, come to hands and knees. Lift the chest and heart, and exhale, come into downward facing dog. And just do that about three more times on your own place, just you following your breath. So moving with your breath. Nice breathing, beautiful breathing. Beautiful. Okay, and then just stay in downward dog. We'll stay here for about three breaths, three or four breaths. As you're in downward facing dog, just see if you can feel each knuckle in your hand pressing down into the floor, each joint. Good. Can you lift your toes a little bit to activate the thighs? So just the toes, not the heels. So lift your toes up a little bit. There you go. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply. And just take one more breath here. And we're gonna come into one of my favorite poses. So come into plank and then down to the floor if you need to bring your knees to the floor first. Don't hurt your shoulders. And come all the way down. Okay, so rest your arms down beside your waist. And I want to actually show you guys something. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. And I want you to come into cobra, but don't like overdo it. Just come into a moderate cobra. Just notice how it feels. Okay. Some of you are like, yuck, this does not feel good. Okay, come on down. <laughs> Bring your arms down beside your waist and lift your chest and your legs off the floor. Try to keep the legs as straight as possible. Elongate the back of your neck, so bring the chin in just a little bit. Can you lift the legs up a little bit higher? That's it, Sonny. And then exhale, come on down. Turn the head to the right. And then lift the chest up, lift the legs up. And really start to see if you can feel in the lower back activating. Yes. The glutes will activate here, but what I'm really trying to do is to get you into the back here and then come on down and relax. So the glutes will definitely activate,
but keeping the legs as straight as possible will isolate it more in the lower back. And if you don't believe me, um, let's we can do a little experiment. So lift up, come up. Now bend the knees 90 degrees, push the heels up to the sky. Do you guys feel your glutes more? Now straighten the legs and lift the inner femur bone up towards the sky. Lift up, lift up, there, there you go. <laughs> and then exhale, come on down. <laughs> so do you guys feel that difference? Okay, so the straighter the legs are, the more we can get into the lower back. Lift the legs up again and the chest. Again, see if you can lift up at the inner thighs. Lift up there, Harriet, there you go. Now lift up the chest. Very good, and then come on down. I hope we're still friends. <laughs> and then come on up. We're actually gonna bring the arms into play now. So lift the chest, lift the legs. Now bring the arms forward, bring the arms out at 45 degrees. So that's halfway between forward and out to the side. So a little bit more, Alexis. There, right there, there you go. Turn the palms in, lift the thumbs up, lift the thumbs up. Lift the thumbs up. Bring your arms here. Here. And then slowly come down right where you are and relax. Do you guys feel that in your upper back? Yeah. <clears throat> Inhale deeply. Exhale. Let's do it again. Leave the arms there. Lift everything up. Lift everything up. Arms here. Here. There you go. A little bit more. Elongate. Now, what I'd like you to do is bring the arms into a cactus. So elbows level with the shoulders. Lift the everything up. Lift the arms up as high as you can. There you go, hung right up. Lift them up, lift a smile. Exhale, come on down. Nice extension, Hong. It's really good. Breathe in deeply. Do you guys feel this in your backs? Yeah. Silly question, but just to make sure you're still alive. <laughs> And bring the arms out at 45 and lift. Let's actually do it a little differently. Arms at 45. Lift the arms first. So rest the forehead on the floor. Lift the arms first. Bring the arms closer. 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 Lift up, up, up. There you go. And then rest the arms for just a second. Breathe in deeply and exhale. And then lift the arms again. Now lift the chest and the legs as high as you can. Good. Bring the arms closer. Closer. Arms up. There you go. Now bend the elbows. Level with the shoulders. And lift up the arms. Lift up the arms. That's it, Brian. Good. Nice, Sonny. Exhale. Come on down. That was the last one, by the way. Thank God. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. What I want to invite you to do is to do Cobra again. So just come into, I'm not going to give you any instruction for Cobra. Just do it the way you, whatever way you do it. But just t notice if it's different. Does it feel different? Look, you just, he has risen. <laughs> Does it feel different? So what we did was we improved the back muscles ability to contract. You hear this a lot when you take yoga classes. People are always saying, like, you got to stretch the front, stretch the heart. It has nothing to do with what's going on in here. It's all in the back muscles, okay? Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Come on up to fours, please, gently. And then come into downward dog. <laughs> Good. Nice, so inhale from here into plank pose, please. Come into upward plank, upward push-up position. Now, drop the hips just a little bit, just a little, but push up the navel into the spine, and then exhale from here, come into downward facing dog. Nice, Harriet. Harriet, does that feel okay in your shoulder? Okay, let me know if it hurts, okay? or if anything tweaks. Inhale, come into plank pose. Okay, hands underneath the shoulders. Now take the sides of the belly 
into the midline, squeeze in, and then bring the navel into the spine as much as you can. Nice, sunny. Exhale, come into downward facing dog. And then inhale, come into plank again. Again, keep the back leg straight. Keep the legs straight. Push back a little bit through the heels of the feet. Bring the chest forward. I want you to come up a little bit more here. More? Push, push. There you go. And exhale, come into downward dog. And then inhale, come into plank pose. Squeeze the sides of the belly in towards each other. And then exhale, come to dog. Bring your knees to the floor and just sit onto your heels just for a second or stand up on your knees and look at me. So when I say take the sides of the belly in, because I'll use this um, uh, cue quite a bit. It's one of my favorite cues. But sometimes it's like, what the heck does that mean? So you actually have these muscles. You have the transverse abs and then the obliques. And they kind of start at the spine and wrap around to the linea, el linea elba. I think it's called the linea elba, but it's the midline of the body. So bring your hands just to the outsides of your abdominal muscles as much as you can, and literally <laughs> take all that flesh and squeeze it in towards each other. Do you guys feel that? How everything just tightens up. So sometimes we're going to be doing some poses, and I'll say take the sides of the belly in. Do you feel how it contracts? Okay. Another cue that I'll sometimes give you, and we'll do this in the next time we do plank, is to bring the pubic bone up. So you lift the pubic bone up. So just rest your hand on your abdominal muscles. Take the other hand to the pubic bone. And I don't want you to do anything except lift the pubic bone up just a little bit. Did you guys notice if your abdominal muscles contracted? Okay, so this also helps to engage our core, if you will. So come back on to fours and come into downward dog. And we're going to do it two more times. Inhale, come to plank pose. Keep the back leg straight. You're pushing through the heels of the feet. Take the sides of the belly in. Hong, can you bring your pubic bone forward just a little bit? There you go. Exhale, come back into downward dog. And then inhale, come to plank pose. There you go. Drop your hips a little. Press back through the heels of your feet. There you go. That's it. Exhale, come to downward dog. Come onto your knees. Inhale and just pause there for a moment. Just stay on to all fours. Inhale deeply. Feel energy in your spine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is one of my favorite poses, another one of my favorites. Lift your right leg up behind you. Lower the right hip just a bit, but lift, keep that hip down, but lift the leg up higher. Good. Now lift your left arm, reach for the ocean, turn the palm in. And then lift both the arm and the leg up as high as you can. Lift both the arm and the leg nice, honey. And then slowly lower down. Okay, lift your right, uh, left leg up, one. And then two, lower the hip a bit. Three, lift the leg up a little higher, nice. Four, lift the right arm. And then turn the palm inwards. And then five, lift the arm and leg up. And if you have it in your capacity, lift the chest towards the ocean. Really lift the chest by lifting the leg and then slowly lower down. And one, lift the right leg. Two, lower the hip. Three, lift the leg up higher. Four, lift the left arm up as much as you can. And then five, lift the arm and the leg. Now, one of the cues here that's useful sometimes is take the sides of the navel into the midline. Take the sides of the belly in, squeeze them in, and then lower back down, hand and leg. One, lift the left leg. 
two, lower the hip, three, lift the leg up higher, four, lift the right arm, and five, lift arm and leg. That's it, Harriet. Try to lift the chest a little towards the ocean. Take the sides of the belly in a little bit more hung. There you go. There you're finding stability. And then exhale slowly. Come on down. Nice. Good job, you guys. One, lift your right leg. Two, lower the hip a bit. Three, lift the leg up higher. Four, lift the left arm. Take the sides of the belly in and then lift up at the chest. Lift the arm and the leg. Beautiful, Kimberly. You have been practicing this. <laughs> and then slowly back down. One, lift the left leg. Two, lower the hip. Three, lift the left leg up higher. Four, lift the right arm. Five, lift arm and leg up. There you go. Now, can you lift the chest a little bit more? Bring the chest towards the ocean. Push back through the heel of the foot, but lift up at the inner thigh. That's it, Brian. And then slowly come on down. And one, lift the right leg. Two, lower the hip. Three, lift the leg up higher. Four, lift the left arm. Five, lift the arm and leg. And hold it there for two, three, four, five, and six. And slowly come on down. Good. And then lift the left leg. This will be the last one. Lower the hip. Lift the leg up higher. Lift the right arm. Try to lower your hip there. Now lift the leg. There you go. And lift the arm. Nice. Take the sides of the belly in. Good. Five and six and slowly down. Very good. Exhale. Come into downward facing dog, please. Notice if downward dog starts to feel a little bit different. Very slowly, bring the right knee to the floor and turn the left heel over to the right. So keep the left leg straight. Left heel is, yeah, you were correct. And then bring the left hand and reach up to the sky. Sometimes you need to put a blanket or something underneath that knee if, if you feel your knee kind of pounding into the floor. But from here, take your left hand to the rib and lift the ribs into the hand now. Lift it up. There you go. That's it. Nice. Can you bring the pubic bone a little bit upwards? Remember when I asked you to lift your pubic bone? That's it. Nice. And then bring the right arm, left arm, sorry, reach up to the sky. Is that okay in your shoulders? Inhale deeply. Exhale. Then take the left arm over your head, palm towards the floor. Really anchor down into the back heel of the foot. Can you spiral the heart upwards towards the ceiling? Nice. Take one more breath here. Take another breath and then exhale slowly. Bring the left arm down to the floor and step your right foot back into downward dog. And just take a delicious breath there. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale. This time let's do the other side. Bring the um, uh, left knee down to the floor. Turn the right heel over to the left and then bring the right hand reach up. Very good. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. That's it, Alexis. Push down into the heel of the foot. Now bring your right hand to the outside of the right rib cage and start to lift the ribs up to the ceiling as much. There you go. Yes. Right. You can feel that sense of expansion. What's really going on is the left side is starting to contract more. And then bring the right hand, reach up to the sky. Again, anchor down into the right heel of the foot. Take another breath or two. And then bring the right arm, reach over the head, palm towards the floor. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling deeply.
lift up in the right ribs if you can a little bit more. Lift up, 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 up. And then see if you can spiral open. Bring this ribs back, back, back. Exhale, slowly bring the hand down to the floor and step your left foot back. Come into downward dog. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Inhale deeply, and exhale deeply. Okay, very slowly from here, start to walk or step um, the feet up to the hands, please. Just take your time. And then from here, turn the toes in, heels out a little bit. Bring your hands to your hip bones. And then elongate the spine and come on up with the straight, the most elongated spine possible, lifting up at the pubic bone. And then relax the arms. Just have the feet about hip distance apart. There you go. And just let the feet, close your eyes for a moment. Step your um, right foot forward and your left foot forward. Step your left foot back and your right foot back. Just with your eyes closed, bring your hands to Namaste Mudra just for a moment. Noticing the, how the quality of your breath has changed from when we first started. Can you sense a little bit different stability cultivating in your body? Very good. <clears throat> okay. So bring the hands, just cross the arms like this. Bring the feet a little bit wider apart, just a little bit. Just more for stability. But Hong, turn your toes in a little bit. There you go. And then <laughs> bring your right shoulder to your right hip bone, but also spiral the heart up a little bit. Keep the legs as straight as possible, so don't bend the knees, and then come back up. You know what? We're going to add a little something here. So take one of your blocks and bring it in between your thighs. Um, I would say for most of us, bring it wide, but, you know, some of you have a little bit more of a narrow gait, <laughs> so maybe bring it like that. But as you wish. I mean, it can be either way. Just look down at your feet, have the toes in a little bit. Okay, so cross your arms. Lift the pubic bone up. So feel the pubic bone lifting, and you can feel how the core is a little bit more engaged. Bring the right shoulder to the right hip bone. And then come back up. And then come back over. Now, one of the things that you want to emphasize or feel here is to feel that the right oblique muscles are contracting. Inhale, come back up, and then come back over again. So feeling the right side, those right muscles in the core engaging, come back up, and then come back over again. They're there. <laughs> and then come back up. Okay, relax the arms just for a second. And then recross the arms the other way, and then we'll do the other side. So left shoulder to left hip bone. And come back up. And then come back over. Left shoulder to left hip bone. And then come back up. And then come back over. Left shoulder to left hip bone. Nice. 
and then come back up and then come back over. Left shoulder to left hip bone. Good. Alexis, just turn your toes in a little bit. There you go. And then inhale back up. We'll do it one more time. Lift everything up, 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 and then take the left shoulder to left hip bone. Nice. Very good. Okay, and then come back up. And now this time, just take the block out, just put it onto the floor. And bring the feet a little closer together. They don't have to be right together, but a little bit closer together. Bring the arms, reach up to the sky. Inhale, reach up as much as you can. Exhale, come on over to the right as far as you can. We're just gonna stay there for about three or four breaths. Lift the chest up. Yes, take the left shoulder back a little bit more. Keep the arms straight if you can. So straighten the, elongate the inner elbow. Nice. And then inhale back up. And close your eyes. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Namaste mudra. As we're going through this practice, notice your breath. How are you breathing? Notice that the breath is, is, is expanding its capacity. It's expanding its capacity to take more in. Also expanding its capacity to let go. And then inhale, bring the arms, reach up. Interlace the fingers, index finger pointed up. Really elongate the elbows and extending the elbows, and then come on over to the right. Did I say right? I meant left. I'm sorry, but all of you were doing it correct. <laughs> My bad. Lift the chest up a little bit, elongate the elbows. There you go, nice. Anchor down into the feet. Take two more deep breaths, the deepest breaths that you possibly can do. And then inhale back up. And again, exhale the hands to Namaste Mudra at the heart. Just close your eyes. Just feel for a moment. Part of yoga postures is their uncanny ability to awaken energy, to awaken primordial energy in the body. How do you start to awaken it is actually by feeling it. Notice what you feel. Notice that you are expanding your capacity to breathe in more, that you're expanding your capacity to let go. So come on to your uh, mats. And again, have the feet about hip distance apart. And then from here, inhale, bend the knees, sit back into chair, lift the chest and bring the arms and reach up to the sky. Sit back a little bit more if you can. Sure, absolutely. And then what I want you to do is to come forward almost resting, but not quite the chest on the thigh. Swing the arms back, you're like in the Swiss Alps going on a ski run. <laughs> and then swing the arms forward, turn the palms up, and then come back into chair. And I want you to keep a little bit of an arch in your lumbar spine. Keep a little bit of an arch so you can almost, don't exaggerate it, but stick your butt out just a little bit. And then inhale, come and stand. And exhale, lower the arms down. Inhale, just close your eyes just for a moment. Breathe in. Feel the expansion of the lower belly. As you exhale, lift slightly up at the pubic bone. Don't exaggerate it. Just it's a, it's a moderate, slight lift just to engage the core. Keep that intention of engaging your core. Think about the sides of the belly moving into the midline. 
You can open your eyes if you wish or keep the eyes closed. Bend the knees, swing the arms forward, come back into chair. Again, feeling a little bit of an arch in the lumbar spine, really lift the chest upwards as much as you can. And then come forward into that skiing position, swing the arms back, you can come forward just a little bit. Engage the core again, lift the pubic bone slightly forward without losing the arch in the lumbar spine. Swing the arms forward, come back and sit into chair pose. Lift the toes up just a little bit to anchor into the heels a little bit more. Keep the arms as straight as possible. And then inhale, come and stand. And exhale, let the arms come down. Inhale deeply. Just close your eyes and just feel for a moment. Again, lifting up at the pubic bone just ever so slightly. Take the sides of the belly in, and then we'll do it one more time. Come back into chair pose. Sit back into the heels of your feet. Lift the toes up. There you go. Nice. Lift the chest, and then come forward into that skier pose. Nice. Now lift the chest, lift the toes again one more time just to anchor into the heels of the feet. And then swing the arms forward and come on up into chair. Again, allow a little bit of curve in the lumbar spine, so stick the butt out just a little bit. But lift the chest and the heart and lean back as much as you can. And then inhale, straighten the legs. And exhale, let the arms come down. Inhale deeply. With your eyes closed, see if you can find the inner arches of your feet. Find the inner thighs, the inner legs. Take the pubic bone slightly upwards. Feel the capacity of your breath increasing. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Very beautiful. Okay. So from here, let's turn. And um, by the way, are you guys feeling that like you're standing a little bit better? You notice the difference? Yeah. It's what happens when you start having a little bit more stability. Stability, baby. Um, let's uh, turn and face the side of the room, please. <clears throat> Spread your feet wide apart. <clears throat> and then turn your right foot to the right. So bring the feet a little bit wider apart. Turn your right foot to the right. Bend your uh, right knee coming into warrior pose. So a little bit wider, huh? A little bit wider, Brian. Especially you, you've got a wider gait. <laughs> And then bend the front knee a little bit. Bring the hands, just interlace the fingers above your head and press up. Okay? Inhaling deeply. Exhale deeply. Lift your right toes for a moment. And now can you find the right inner arch? That's it. You guys are going to have strong adductors when you leave here. Inhale, bring the arms out. Good. Sometimes I like to look at both middle fingers just to find my alignment. Keep lifting up the chest and the heart. And then inhale, straighten the leg. And exhale, relax the arms down. Turn the right toes in. Turn the left toes out. Before you come into this side, think about the inner arches again. Lift the inner arches. Hong, separate your feet just a little bit more. Same with you, Alexis. Just a little bit wider. And lifting the inner arches, start to bend that front knee. Keep the back leg straight. Press down into the right heel of your foot. Nice. Bring the arms above the head, interlace the fingers, and really press up. So press up. Now straighten, the, don't, unbend the left knee just a little bit. Now come back into elongation in the trunk. That's it, Kimberly, just like that. And then bend the left knee. 
There you go. Bend it a little bit more and then bring the arms out. Good. Inhale deeply. Can you find that inner arch of the feet? Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Lift your left toes just for a moment. That'll activate the front of your thigh. <laughs> and then inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, relax the arms. Turn the left toes in. Beautiful. Turn the right toes out. We're going to add on here. <clears throat> and again, lift the inner arches of your feet. There you go. And now start to bend the right knee. Take the arms out into warrior two. Inhale deeply. Press down here. Right there. There you go. And then what you're going to do from here is inhale and then exhale and take your left arm and just bring it on the inside of the left, uh, I'm sorry, your right arm on the inside of your right shin bone and take the other arm over the head and then inhale back up and exhale back over. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale back up and exhale back over. Inhale back up. Now explore your own range of motion here, but do it slowly. Exhale. You can bring the arm down a little bit more. Inhale back up. Exhale back over. And one more time. Inhale back up. And exhale back over. Now we're going to stay there just for a couple of breaths. Not too long. Take the left arm over the head and reach. Bend your front knee just a little bit more, Hong. There you go. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Take one more breath in. And then inhale back up. And then relax the arms, straighten the right leg, turn the right toes in. Just bring the hands to Namaste Mudra at the heart center just for a moment. Take a couple of deep breaths. Notice again how your capacity is increasing to breathe in, to draw in, to take in. But also your capacity to let go. And the more that you are able to be in your breath, the more that you can hold your attention in your breath, the more that everything just seems to dissolve. Let's turn the left foot to the left. And again, find the inner arches of the feet. And then take the bend the left knee, take the arms out. We'll do it a few times, that movement. So again, lift the inner arches, inhale deeply, exhale, take the left elbow or the left hand to the inside of the left leg, the right arm over the head. Inhale, back up, inhale, breathing in, and exhale, come back into the pose. There you go. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, come back in to the pose. Inhale, come back up. Breathing in. Exhale, come back into the pose. Inhale, come back up. See if you can find the pubic bone and lift up. Exhale, take the left arm on the inside. See if you can create a little bit of an isometric contraction. Press the arm into the knee, the knee into the arm, and then inhale back up. We'll do it one more time. And exhale, come back into the pose. We'll stay there for a couple of breaths. So again, you're creating a little bit of an isometric contraction, pressing arm or hand into knee, leg, and knee, leg into arm. Bend the knee a little bit more, Alexis. There you go. And straighten the back leg. There you go. Press down here. There you go. Inhale right there. Breathing in. Exhale. Inhale. Come back up. 
and then step the right foot up to the left foot and facing the front of the room. Breathing in deeply. And exhale deeply. Notice that your capacity to inhale, your capacity to exhale is increased. The breath is becoming more fluidized, more in sync. Okay, so from here, what I'd like you to do is to step your left foot back facing the front of the room still. You're going to come into warrior one. But first, bring your hands to your hips. Bring your hands to your hips. Good. Have the hips square or facing the front of the room. So you think about two headlights on the pelvic bones, and those headlights are pointed forward. Good. And then start to bend the right knee. But before you do anything with the arms, separate your feet a little bit more, Alexis. There you go. Even bring the foot back a little bit more and then over to the left. And then from here, see if you can pit, lift the pubic bone just a little bit. Bring this foot right here. There you go. And then turn the foot in a little bit more like that. There you go. And take the sides of the belly in. Now have the hands on the sides of the belly pulling the belly in, lift the navel upwards, and then bring the arms forward and bring the hands and reach up to the sky. Take the biceps back. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. Can you lift up? Lift. There you go. That's it. There he is. Lift up. Good. Three more breaths here. Inhale deeply, press down into the back heel of the foot. Feel both arches, inner arches lifting upwards. Inhaling. And exhaling. And one more breath in. And then step your left foot up to the right foot. And let the hands come down to the sides and just take a breath. Inhale deeply and exhale deeply. And then step your right foot back. We'll do the same on this side. First of all, bring the hands to the hips. Imagine those headlights on your hips pointing forward. Good. And then start to bend the left knee. Anchor down into the back heel of the foot. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Take the hands to the sides of the belly. Brian, bring your foot, your right foot here. And then turn the foot in just a little bit. Good. And now press down into the back heel. Good. Take that leg. There you go. Think about that inner thigh coming back. Now lift away from the hips. There you go. That was it. <laughs> Lift the pubic bone, take the sides of the belly in, then bring the arms reach forwards and lifting up. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Think about the pubic bone lifting up. And then you're also lifting everything in the upper torso away from your waist. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. There you go. And take one more breath in. And then inhale, step your right foot up to your left foot. And just pause there for a moment. OK, 
Okay. Come and face uh, the front of the room. Inhale, bring the arms, reach up to the sky, and exhale, swan dive, fold forward into a forward bend. Inhale, hands to shin bones, lift the chest away from the legs. Exhale, fold, and bring the feet back, come into downward facing dog. And from here, I want you to inhale, come into plank pose just for a moment. Engage the core. Remember this pose. We've done it a few times now. Take the sides of the belly in. Press the navel up into the back and into the um, ceiling. Exhale, come into downward dog. Very good. Do it one more time. Inhale, come into plank pose. Take the sides of the belly in. Draw the pubic bone forward slightly. Push up a little bit more here. There you go. Can you do a little bit more? There you go. And then exhale, come into downward facing dog. Very good. Now take the right foot forward, breathe into warrior one. Exhale into warrior two. Once you come to warrior two, straighten the right leg and cross the arms and then face me. So straightening the right leg. Now adjust the feet if you need to. The heel of the front foot will sort of come to the heel or slash arch of the back foot, okay? Straightening the front leg, lift everything up. So lift the pubic bone up, take the sides of the belly in, and then inhale here and exhale, bring your right shoulder to the right hip bone. Now don't allow the left hip bone to stick out. Keep the hips squeezing into the midline. There you go, Harriet, just like that. Inhale, come back up and exhale, come back over, right shoulder to right hip bone. Don't allow the left shoulder to drop forward. Keep that left shoulder moving back, and then inhale back up, and exhale, right shoulder to right hip bone. Inhaling here, stay here for a moment. Very good. And inhale, back up. Do you have pain when you do that? Okay. And lift up the chest, and then exhale, right shoulder to right hip bone. Now from here, take your right arm down the right leg. Just don't even hold the leg. Just let it hang there. Bring this left shoulder back. There you go. And then take this hand down. And then take the shoulder back. Now take the left hand and bring it on top of your left ribs. And think about the left ribs now. Lift them towards the ceiling. Lift those left ribs towards the ceiling. And then take the left arm, reach up over your, to the sky, and then over your head. Triangle pose. Trikonasana. Inhale, deplay. Exhale, deplay. Inhale, deplay. And exhale, deplay. Beautiful, Sunny. Bring this shoulder back. There you go. Take another breath or two. Feel your breath expanding. Expand the capacity of your breath. And then inhale back up. And then step, um, sorry, bend your right knee. Take the hands to the floor to the right foot and step your right foot back, downward dog. Brian, does your right knee hurt? When I try and go deeper into triangle pose, it's like collapse. Mm. Um, okay. Um, I'll watch you on this side, on the next side. Inhale, deep play, and exhale. Inhale, come to plank pose. Squeeze the sides of the belly in. Take the pubic bone forward. Press the heels back a little bit. Let the hips dip just a little bit, but activating the legs upwards. Very good. Press up here. Press up. There you go. Like that. And then exhale. Come into downward dog. Take the left foot forward. Inhale into warrior one. And exhale into warrior two pose. Good. And then from here, straighten your left leg and cross your arms and just look at your feet. So you want the heel of the front foot here to be sort of in line with the heel of the back foot or arch is fine. 
One of the things to kind of imagine is that you're leaning into a wall. So there's a wall behind you. So if you were standing right up against the wall, it would sort of look like this. Okay, you don't have a wall there, but just imagine that you do. In, lift the chest and heart, lift the pubic bone up, take the sides of the belly in, and then imagine or take your left shoulder to the left hip bone. Keep the arms crossed. Just pause there for a moment. Open the heart up a little bit more. Remember that left shoulder, sorry, your right shoulder is on the wall. And then inhale, come back up. Lift up at the pubic bone. Lift up at the thighs. And then take your left shoulder to your left hip bone. I almost want to do like some activation on your thighs and see if anything changes. I'm like, oh my God, perfect case study. And then inhale, come back up. Good. Just pause there for a second. Lift everything up. Yeah, you hold your shoulders for a second. And then come back into it. Left shoulder to left hip bone. There you go. Now, lean into my hand just a little. There you go. Does that feel different? <laughs> Inhale, and then let your left hand come down and take your right hand up towards the sky. Probably. Um, and take the arm over the head. What if you just are like this? Take the feet a little closer. Okay. And lift your toes. Good. And then take the shoulders over. How's that feel? Just bend the knee a little bit. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, don't hurt them. And then inhale, come back up. Exhale, bend the front knee, uh, take the hands to the left foot, and take the left foot back, downward facing dog. Last one, last plank pose. So inhale, come to plank. Take the sides of the belly in, draw the pubic bone forward, press back through the heels of the feet. Activate the inner legs. And then exhale, come into downward dog. Okay, was that better that time? Uh, okay. Inhale, come into plank pose, and exhale, come all the way down to the floor. And bring your hands, we call this crocodile pose, makrasana. So either bring the arms like this, and rest your forehead onto the arm, or just bring the palms on top of each other, and rest your forehead on top of the palm. So. Yogi's choice. And this is a really great pose to practice diaphragmatic breathing. So breathe really fully into the lower belly as much as you can. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling deeply. Just continue to breathe here for a moment.
Okay, so inhale deeply and exhale deeply. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things here. One is start off by bringing your hands to your lower back. <clears throat> and then inhale, you're going to lift the chest and swing your right arm forward as much as you can. Turn the palm inwards and lift the chest and the heart as much as you can. Now with your left hand on your sort of your lower back glutes, try and relax your glutes here for a moment. Just lift the chest and lift the arm and then swing the arm back and lower your right ear to the floor. And then do the same left side, bring the left arm, reach forward. Try and relax the glutes as you're doing this. Turn the palm inwards and lift the chest up as much as you can. Try to relax the glutes. And then swing the right arm, left arm back, sorry, and turn your left ear to the floor. And do the same now again. So bring the right arm forward. And lift up as much as you can. And then swing the right arm back and turn the right ear to the floor. And then swing the left arm forward. Lift the chest up as much as you can. Lift the arm up. Very good. Lift up a little higher and then take the left arm back and bring the left ear to the floor. Good. Now this time swing the right arm and lift the left leg. So right arm, left leg, lift the chest up. Other leg. <laughs> <laughs> lift up as much as you can and then swing the right arm back, lower the left leg and lower the right ear to the floor. And swing the left arm forward and this time lift the right leg. Inhaling, lifting up as high as you can. And then exhale, swing the left arm back and lower the right leg down, left ear to the floor. Inhale, lift the right arm, left leg, chest. And then exhale, slowly come back. And then lift the left arm and right leg. Good. And then slowly come back. And one more time each side. So right arm, left leg. Exhale, slowly come back. Move the body with the breath. Move the body with the breath. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Move the body with the breath. Exhale, slowly come back down. Now just pause there for a moment. Just take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Okay, bring the forehead to the floor. Bring the hands like you would for cobra, but you're not going to come into cobra. I'm just going to leave the hands there. I want you to bend the right knee, just the right knee. Engage the right glute, and then lift the knee off the floor. Don't lift the hip off or the, the pelvic bone off the floor. Just lift up as high as you can. And then relax the leg down. If you can, just relax the forehead down. If you want to lift the head up, it's fine. But don't push down so much in the upper body. I want you just to isolate the glute as much as possible. Bend the right knee, engage the glute, and do it again. Uh, right leg, we're on the right leg. Same side. Push up as much as you can, good. And then down. Uh, that doesn't matter so much. It's just push up through the heel of the foot. Bend the right knee again. Engage the glute. And lift up. Oh, we have some hip extension to work on, you guys. <laughs> and then slowly come down. Is it this side? It is this side. And just do me a favor, just do the other side. I want to see what happens. And then bend the right knee again and push up through the heel of the foot. 
Can you come up higher? And come on back down. And do it again. Right side, engage the glute, lift up. And back down. Just pause there just for one second. I see something. Take a breath in. Exhale out. We're going to do it one more time on the right side in just a moment. Okay. Bend the right knee one last time. Engage the glute and lift it up. Let me get a little bit. Push up, 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 up. Brian, you're getting some length there, getting some contraction. Exhale, come on down. I know some of you have very sleepy glutes. <laughs> Bend the left knee and engage and then lift up. Try not to lift the pelvic bone, just lift up the, the leg bone as much as you can. Two, three, push up there. Four, up, 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 and down, relax. Shake the glutes out a little bit and then do it again. So in, bend the knee, engage the glute, and lift it up. In two, three, four, five, six, and come on down. Take a breath in, and then bend the knee, and engage the glute, and lift it up. There you go, good. Two, three, four, five, and six, and relax down. Take a breath in, and bend the knee, and engage the glute, and lift it up. Two, three, four, come on, five, six, does it hurt? Okay, and relax. Good job, you guys. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. So we're gonna do a couple of different poses to work on extension. So take the arms down beside your waist, lift your legs, just like one of the very first poses we did, Shalabhasana. Lift the legs up and lift the chest up as high as you can. Good, that's it, Sonny, just like that. Lift up from the inner leg as much as you can. There you go, Brian. Straighten your legs as best as you can and then slowly come on down. Take a breath in. Feel the capacity of your, of your breath increasing. Did you feel them improving? Yeah. Good, we're gonna get those glutes. Uh, ben, okay, this time lift up again. And I want you to keep your legs straight, but lift your chest as much as you can. And I want you to imagine, don't bend your knees or anything, but imagine that you're reaching for your feet here. So lifting up, imagine that you're reaching for your feet as much as you can. Your legs aren't bending. We're going to do that soon. Don't worry. But reach for your feet. Come on one more time. That's it. Nice. You're coming up higher. Exhale. Come on down. Good job. Do you notice that? It's like all of a sudden you went up from here to there. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. And come on up again. So same pose. Come on up again. But this time bend your knees. And now push up the heels towards the ceiling. And now reach for your ankles. Don't grab them, but reach for your ankles as best as you can. That's it, Harriet. Reach for your ankles. Three, four, five, six. And come on down. Are we still friends? <laughs> Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, bend the knees. Uh, come on up. Reach for the ankles. Don't grab them yet. Re just come on up as high as you can. Push up, up, up. Now, if you want to, grab your ankles. If you can, if you can't, just keep working this. This is, this is very challenging, but kick up as much as you can. We'll stay here for about 15 more seconds. Nice. Inhale deeply. 
<laughs> Excel deflate. And then come on down. <laughs> Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Very good. Okay. We have a guest. <laughs> okay. I want you guys to come over and um, onto your side if you want to kind of pivot and face me, you can do that, but you're going to come onto your side. Now this pose, sometimes I do a dedication for a pose. This pose is dedicated to Kimberly. <laughs> a cat always enlivens everything, right Harriet? <laughs> this is Shakti. Shakti. Okay, so with the leg, with the bottom leg, um, I want you to kind of do an external rotation. So almost like the toe is on the floor. That's it, Sonny, just like that. Push back a little through the heel of the foot. And then just lift the foot about three inches, two inches off the floor. Lift the leg, I should actually say, not the foot. Lift the leg and hold there. Now bring your, uh, one of your fingers to feel your adductors, your, your adductor on your leg that's lifting. Do you guys feel it popping? And then come on down. Do the external rotation on that bottom leg and then lift up just a little bit. And hold it there. And then relax down. Good, just completely relax it, Brian. There you go. And then externally rotate that bottom leg and lift up just a little bit. If you can, with that upper hand, feel the adductor just kind of popping out, engaging. And then relax down. Good. Externally rotate the leg, lift it up. And then relax down. Do it two more times. So externally rotate the leg and lift it up. And then relax down. Straighten the leg. And then externally rotate. Good. And now lift it up one more time. There you go. Do you feel that right in there? It's one of my poses for runners to do. And that's fine. And then come on down. And then turn around and we'll do the other side. <clears throat> so the reason why I dedicated this pose to Kimberly is because you guys can just look at me for a sec that what I find a lot with people and this is a common complaint they say they have pain in their hips and they usually will point here what muscle is here this is the glute medius the opposite muscle to the glute medius there's a couple, but one of the big ones is the adductors. If the adductors aren't working, this is going to be tight. And we actually do things that are counterintuitive. We actually start to stretch it out like, oh, and it feels good, but the pain quickly comes back because these guys are not being addressed. So sometimes this is like what I have found, this is a really good hack. Push through that heel and then externally rotate is just to lift, um, to activate the adductors. Okay, straighten the leg if you can. There you go. You feel that right there. And then relax down. Okay, so externally rotate the bottom leg and lift it up. Try and, try and keep the leg straight. You're not so much lifting the foot off the floor, you're lifting the leg bone. So we're not looking at the foot, we're actually looking at what the femur bone is doing. And then come on down and relax. Straighten the leg. Okay. And externally rotate as much as you can. Lift the leg up. There you go. Yes. And then relax down.
I wouldn't do that figure four pose anymore. I, I don't, I mean, as I said at the beginning, I don't teach stretching, but I never do that pose anymore. Um, Cause just a lot of the hip flex, hip openers are just creating in the long term more instability. Um, so what we really want to do is look at what muscles are weak and what muscle, the muscle here is weak. I'm sorry, I'm jamming into your adductor, <laughs> is, the, is the adductors. So once we start to get those fired up, um, and so do it again. Try to, again, less is more. So think about in your mind, are you isolating this muscle? Okay, and then relax down. So just notice if you're engaging your core or if you're trying to lift your hips or if you're squeezing your glutes. Don't do any of that. Just lift this leg up. And it doesn't have to be that much. Lift it up. <laughs> Here's an interesting little fact. You've got about six different adductor muscles. It's not just one adductor, and they all do different things. And relax down. Some of them are responsible for extension. Some of them are flexion. Some of them, well, all of them adduct, of course. And then do it again. Some of them are responsible for inner rotation, for external rotation. Some of them responsible for propulsion of the leg and down. And as we talked about earlier, for the integrity of the feet. So some of you have feet issues. That's related to adductors. Okay, one more time. Do it. Bow-leggedness, absolutely. Try and straighten your leg a little bit more. And then come on down. Good. Okay, come and um, stand up onto your knees like this. And I want you to come in the middle of your mat. And if you want to, bring a blanket underneath your knees here. Okay, and then face the side of the room. So come onto your knees um, and then stand up onto your knees. <laughs> you like little kitty cats. <laughs> and then straighten your um, right leg out to the right. Take your right leg to the right. Cross your arms. Lift the chest. And then exhale. Bring the right shoulder to the right hip bone. Does that hurt your knee? It, it doesn't matter, Harriet. But if you, you know what, to, in, to create more stability in the hips, turn the foot in a little bit. There you go. And then inhale, come back up. So full breath in, and then exhale and come on over to the right. Think about right shoulder to right hip bone. And then come back up, inhale. And then exhale and come back over. Remember to spiral the heart open a little bit more. And then come back up. And then come back over. Nice. And then come back up. And this will be the last one. Try and lift up at the pubic bone. And then come back over. And this time, let the right hand just come down the right leg. Don't try and reach for anything. Just notice where it comes. And then bring the left hand up. And then the arm over your head. Inhale, deflate. Nice, Alexis. Exhale, deflate. Inhale deeply and exhale deeply. And think about really breathing right now into the left side of your lungs. Feel the left side of your lungs expanding. And take one more breath in and then inhale, come back up. And then exhale, bring the right knee down to the floor. And you can just sit back onto the heels for just a moment. Just close your eyes just for a moment. Bring your hands to your heart center. 
And just take a couple of deep breaths in. And exhale out. Inhale in and exhale out. And then we'll come and do the other side. So bring, uh, stand up onto your knees, bring the left foot to out to the side. Cross your arms. And again, remember to lift up at the pubic bone. So lift up, feel the inner line of your body completely getting longer. So again, lifting out of the waist. And then take your left shoulder to the left hip bone. Inhale deeply, exhale. Inhale, come back up and lift up again and then exhale, come back over to the side. <laughs> Inhale, come back up and then come on over to the side. Left shoulder to left hip. Remember to keep lifting up. There you go. Good. And we'll do it one more time. Inhale, come back up. Lift everything up, up, up. At left shoulder to left hip bone. And then let the left arm come down. Take the right arm, reach up to the sky. Really breathe into the right side of your body as much as you can. Inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply. Inhaling deeply exhaling deeply and then inhale come back up and just come and sit back onto the heels bring the left leg back just rest for a moment. Just pause sitting onto your heels. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Okay, come on to your backs here, please. Okay, bend your knees and bring them like you would for bridge posts. The feet about hip, a little bit wider than the hips actually. A little bit wider than the hips. Turn the toes slightly in. And bring the hands down. It's <laughs> not your ways. <laughs> We've been attacked by the pussycat. Yeah. Seriously, my tail. Okay, so inhale, lift the chest or lift the hips up off the floor as high as you can. Bring the arms out to the sides. I forgot to give you that cue. Bring the arms out to the sides. Now squeeze the glutes as much as you can. Can you lift up a little bit more? There you go. Squeeze the glutes. Really squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them. And then come on down. And... Squeeze the glutes, lift up as high as you can. And then come on down. Squeeze the glutes. Hong, bring your feet a little bit wider. There you go. And lift up. And then come on down. And then squeeze the glutes and lift up. And then come on down. And squeeze the glutes. And come on up.
Nice. Push down into the heels of the feet, lift the toes just for a moment. And I want you, without moving your feet, don't move your feet, but pull the heels to the shoulders now and lift up higher if you can. Do you guys feel that difference in your hamstrings? Okay, and then come on down. All right, now bring your hands down beside your waist. This will be almost our last pose. Bring the knees into the chest. Don't hug the knees, just leave the hands where they are. And again, just notice where the knees are. And then what you're gonna do is you'll inhale, bring the arms over your head like we did before, but straightening your legs, push the heels towards the ceiling. Heels up to the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the knees into the chest and the hands down beside your waist. We'll do that a couple of times. Inhale, straighten the legs, push the heels up to the ceiling, arms over the head to the floor behind you. Exhale, bring the knees into the chest. And then inhale, bring the arms up over to the floor behind your head, all the way over. There you go. Exhale, bring the knees into the chest. We're gonna do that a couple more times. Inhale, straightening the legs, push the heels up. Exhale, bring the knees into the chest, the arms down beside you. Inhale, straightening the legs, push the heels up. There you go, right there, push up, right there. Exhale, bring the knees into the chest. And one more time, inhale, come into the pose. This time we're actually gonna stay there for a few breaths. So just staying there, push up through the heels. Now find the inner leg and this time push through the inner heel of your foot. So find that inner leg and push through the inner heel of your feet. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Good, two more breaths. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Now a little challenge to finish off is we're gonna come down to the count of 15. So slowly come down, you're gonna bring your feet to the floor to the count of 15. So one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, you should be halfway now, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 and a half, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> oh, yes. That's to activate all your hip flexors. So I'm going to come into Shavasana. So set yourself up. I want to show you, since we're doing this kind of special um, retreat this week, um, Harriet, just see where you are, but come and sit up, actually. If you guys want to just quickly look at Harriet. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you want to, when we're doing Shavasana, we can practice a thing called spinal molding, which is just golden for the back. And so you have these curves in the lumbar spine. You also have a curve in the neck, and so we'll talk more about this on Tuesday. Um, but we want to try and put some of those curves back. Remember we were talking earlier about this, and so the neck has lost its curve, and this has created a lot of problems for the neck because the neck is sitting, head is sitting like this. So at a neurological level, we want to start training this body to start having those curves again. And um, a lot of issues can actually be gone just from doing spinal molding. It's quite remarkable. So what you'll do is just take two blankets um, and you can, you can do this with one blanket. So you can just put one blanket here and then lie back, or you can do two blankets. If this is new for you, you may just want to start with one blanket. So just check it out and see how it feels. Um, sometimes it can be a lot of energy for people to do, you know, because if their curve is already flattened, to kind of have that arch can be a bit too much. But come and lie back. Yeah, you know, I need to actually, <sighs> that's, <sighs> I 
Yeah. There, I like that. That one's better. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, um, I'm going to do a little, uh, just look at what I'm going to do with Harriet because this is a little specific. I'm actually going to take this out and then she'll, it'll be half, but then it will kind of come down here and um, uh, kind of like a, a slide, if you will. So lie back. Let's see how that looks. Okay. I like that better. Is that nice? Mm -hmm. She's actually smiling now before she wasn't. So that's a good sign. I'm going to uh, borrow this for a second, Kimberly. Then wait a second, you guys are getting too comfortable too quickly. So the other part is the neck. And so we need to set up for the neck. And this is very specific. So take you're going to take a blanket. Yeah, we could do it like that. And just roll it up. I'm going to get another one for you because that one's not nice for this. And then place this underneath the neck. The head will come off. Okay. Now start with a little bit of a smaller roll today, but then maybe over time you can actually start to roll it a little bit more. I'm going to get you another blanket. If anybody is feeling like any sensations that doesn't feel comfortable, let me know and then the triple ohm roadside service will come over and help you. <clears throat> Is that nice? Okay. See if you can bring the arms out to the sides. How's that feel, Brian? Yeah. And just breathing in deeply and exhale deeply. I'm going to fix it. And lift your head. Okay. You're welcome. Does it feel nice? Mm -hmm. okay. Just take your attention for a moment into your breathing. Just as we did when we started the class today. See if you can come back to a steady breath again, just like when we first started. And then as we've been doing the class today, we've been cultivating this steady breath. With your mind's eye, count how long it takes for you to inhale and how long it takes for you to exhale. even the breath as much as you can.
see the rising and the falling of the belly. As you inhale, the belly expands. The navel rises towards the ceiling. To allow yourself to dissolve. Allow yourself to drift more deeply into the breath.
So breathing in deeply and exhaling deeply. As you inhale, inhale possibility. Inhale new strength. Inhale courage. Inhale the connection to the source. Our breath connects us to that source of creation. Primordial life force energy that animates the entire universe. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya As we connect to the source, we connect to that aspect of power within ourselves. It is indomitable, willful. Infinite. Opening up the doorway to manifesting and living our life purpose. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Slowly begin to bend one knee. Bend the other knee. It's taking your time. Place your hands on your lower belly. And just take a breath or two. When you're ready, just gently start to roll over. And then come and sit up. How do you guys feel? Rejuvenated. Yeah. Good. We'll see how you feel today as you're moving. Um, try not to do anything exuberant. <laughs> Just stay in that rest and digest place as much as you uh, can today. Um, sometimes some people feel really strong after they do these practices and then go and run a marathon and um, just kind of honor your body you're going to go through a little bit of a healing process this week 